That was a huge moment for us as a baseball organization, moving from the bottom of the league to winning our first ever World Series. All credit must go to the players and coaches that made this happen. This was also a huge moment for our community, as over 500,000 people attended our World Series parade. And for me, growing up a lifelong Rangers fan, it was a dream come true. However, this was also a win for the data team that I lead at the Rangers. And I'm here today to talk to you about how we use data intelligence to drive competitive advantage and transform how the modern game is played. Most of you may know this, but baseball has always been a data-driven sport. Whether it's comparing statistics on the back of baseball cards to the modern age of Moneyball. However, how data is used in decision making has changed dramatically in this modern age of AI. Data used to be descriptive, evaluating past performance. Now, data is predictive, optimizing our understanding of future player performance. One example of this is how we're using data and AI for biometric insights. We build predictive models on how the body's motion affects how a ball is thrown, leading to designed pitches guided by AI that are personalized for each unique pitcher. Further, with a better understanding of how players move when swinging the bat, we can provide biomedical recommendations to optimize for specific types of hits. With these insights, we can advise our players. You're trying to hit for power? Get those legs and try to get it out of the ballpark. If you want to just hit for contact, just square up the ball. In Little League, my coach would always tell me to choke up on the bat and bend your knees. We now measure that at high frame rate, 300 frames a second. This pose tracking gives us further insight into injuries and workload management, too. Data and AI help to make the most of our players' athletic talents, leading to those incredible clutch hits that maybe you all saw during the World Series. Pose tracking isn't our only new data source. We also track every player's position continuously at 30 frames a second for every major league game. This gives us unprecedented ways of measuring defensive capabilities. By understanding tendencies, reaction times, and the way that our fielders move when trying to catch that fly ball, we can optimize our defensive placement using AI to maximize the likelihood of a player making that out. And yeah, maybe we got a little bit too good at that, and Major League Baseball changed the rules a couple years ago, but we still use it to this day. This culminated in a playoff run where we went 11-0 on the road, highlighted by impressive defensive plays such as home run robbing catches and clutch double plays. How did we change this data and AI game? I'll say it, always, it wasn't always like this. Getting to this point where we could realize these successes was not easy. There were so many challenges that we faced just a few years ago when we began our data modernization journey. Stop me if any of this sounds familiar. <laughs> Our on-prem stack could not scale to these new data sources. Those rising IT costs and the maintenance of these on-prem servers led to an untenable ROI on AI investments. Further, as our data team grew, supporting minor league operations all around the country, as well as scouting initiatives all around the world, those governance and permissions became difficult to manage. We lacked governance and ran into fragmented silos. Our data teams were split between minor league player development, amateur analytics, international and advanced scouting teams. These slow and disjointed processing within silos led to delays of reports that our players and coaches needed. In some cases, we weren't delivering reports until the next day, well after the game had already finished. And while we don't have a live link to the dugout, perhaps uh, caused by a certain trash can banging incident a few years ago, it is still imperative that our players receive that information post-game to prepare themselves for what happened and how to be successful tomorrow. With 162 games, baseball is a marathon, and quick feedback is a necessity for our players. To solve these problems, we have unified and simplified our data and AI stack on the lake house with Databricks. Unity Catalog unites our data silos under one roof. We have a variety of data with sensitive information, such as player addresses, financial contract information. Further, biomechanical and medical records should not be widely accessible through the org. 
Unity Catalog allows us to have that single shared platform with appropriate permissions in place to comply, comply with both internal and external regulations, such as FERPA and HIPAA. Unity Catalog also gives us the ability to manage clusters, ETL pipelines, all within the JSON metadata. Once our data is loaded, the data intelligence platform is also able to comment and provide AI summaries around what that data actually is. This democratizes use for our analysts who sometimes struggle to figure out where the correct data source lies. Finally, we've also built hundreds of ML and AI models on this data. The ML registry governed by Unity Catalog gives us a great platform to organize and search those models. However, Unity Catalog also allows us to govern who and which data teams can access models and features from the feature store for their own projects. Data lineage of all of this gives us a great insight to see how the data flows from source to modeling to those final BI reports that our players need. Transparency builds trust. And of course, data sharing allows us to connect with other data verticals and vendors inside of our department. This includes ballpark, it includes concessions, as well as sharing live data within how the fans are engaging with the team. Everything with the appropriate permissions in place. The net result, we now have four times more data ingested and used for AI at the same cost as our legacy systems. We have hundreds of users scattered around the country and the globe with secure and governed access to these data and ML KPIs. We also have 10 times faster data insights after games and workouts, getting the reports into the hands of our players quickly that they need to be the best that they can be. And of course, all of this contributed to our first ever World Series win. I tried to have a spotlight on my ring for the whole time, but it's, uh, it's all they didn't send no to that. But. Databricks is really helping our organization win by empowering our team with data intelligence. However, we're just getting started here. With the rise of generative AI, we have invested time and effort to find innovation in this new space. I actually have a quick demo where I will be using the Databricks AI BI Genie to provide a natural language interface into our data. With the trade deadline coming up, as well as being in San Francisco, I thought it would be fun to see if there are any players on the San Francisco Giants that might have future trade value. In this application, we are using public data from Baseball Savant. Notice that these tables, as well as the application, are both governed throughout Unity Catalog. Users need to have the correct permissions to access both. Comments, as well as summaries, describe and help teach the Genie application what exactly these internal KPIs that mean something to me, but maybe not to you, what those actually are. And of course, all of this needs to be shared and governed within the workspace. Analysts can ask broad questions of this data. You're going to see here that we're going to be looking for just who on the Giants has any trade value. I know, I type super slow, I guess. They were like, do you want to do this on the computer? And I'm like, ah, oh, it's fine. <laughs> you can pretend that I'm typing that out. Uh, the genie doesn't know how to answer this question of what is trade value. It just brings back statistics about players on the Giants. So what we can do now is instruct the genie what I care about with trade value. I want to look at the difference between expected and observed performance to look for undervalued players. Notice that we quickly see that the Genie application is able to see that Luis Matos, as well as Matt Chapman, both have had significant underperformance this season on the Giants, but maybe will have better performance for the rest of the season if they call Luis uh, Matos ever back up from AAA. But that's a side note. Anyway, we can save this as a thumbs up, as well as provide instructions, and save it as an instruction to save it off as, uh, for an easy access later on. And we can also visualize this data for quick consumption. Since we saved this as an instruction, it's trivial now to do the same analysis for other baseball clubs. Here I'm asking it, do the same analysis for the Chicago White Sox. After some time thinking, that's my double fast forward click. There it goes. We see that Martin Maldonado as well as Andrew Benatendi have been underperforming for the Chicago White Sox. What this has allowed us to do is democratize and allow our analysts, SQL developers, and less technical stakeholders 
unprecedented access to our raw data in our database. This allows them to ask the questions they need and create an efficient starting point for targeted and further decision making leading into the trade deadline. Thank you so much to the Databricks team that supports us, Michelle, Hussein, Chris, that onboarded us up here. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you all this morning. Finally, we're always looking to continue pushing the boundaries of data and AI and sport. If interested, please reach out. Baseball is a team sport after all. And I will say we do a lot of our hiring in the offseason, so best of luck if you use that QR code. But you can always find me on LinkedIn and happy to kind of talk about this further. Thanks so much to everybody.